Tip number three is always be mindful of your drive gauge. This drive gauge is everything, bro. Yo, 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 what is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Punk, and I'm back with another one today. We are going to have a very good video because today I'm going to be finally teaching you fellas out there how to get good at Street Fighter 6. I know I get a lot of comments every day on Twitch, even on YouTube comments. You're always asking me, can I make a guide or give some tips, lessons, whatever it is. You know that kind of thing can i teach y'all how to get better at street fighter 6 and in this video i'm going to be giving y'all a lot of stuff that's going to be helping you get better whether you're a beginner or whether you're intermediate or maybe even if you're a pro you might can learn something from this video it's going to be a lot of different things we're going to cover and go over to help you get better and make sure you're not stuck in those lower ranks so yeah, I'm going to be teaching you how to get better today pretty much. So without further ado, I need you to go like, comment, subscribe, and turn that post notification bell on. And let's get into it. All right. First thing on the list that we are going to go over that's going to help you get better is going to be the parry system. This little thing right here, you see this parry. It takes about a little bit over 50% of a drive gauge. Maybe like about 55-ish is what I meant. Yeah, like 55 ish of a drive gauge but this parry right here serves a lot of uses that we are going to be going over and the first is going to be make sure you are parrying projectiles watch when i block this projectile you see how my drive gauge is going a bit lower right now look at when i parry you see how much more drive gauge i am keeping when i do the parry right so this is going to be very important to do when you're fighting projectile characters. You never want to be blocking these and losing your drive gauge. You always want to make sure to parry. And you know, even better, you want to try to practice your perfect parry. If you don't know what perfect parry is, I'm going to show you right here. There we go. You see that little animation right there? And that sound cue, boom, boom. And that's like regular parry is this and then boom now what this does is one you lose zero drive gauge at all because you see even when you perfect parry you lose i meant you regular parry you still don't get the whole drive gauge back but you lose less than blocking but if you perfect parry you lose nothing you see my drive gauge is still at a hundred percent look at that still a hundred percent when I get the perfect parry, it's still 100%. So you don't lose any drive gauge at all when you do the perfect parry. So that is going to be the first use of the perfect parry. Now, also, you can open up things like this with perfect parry. You see that? How I could get a punish for the perfect parry? Because I perfect parry the fireball. And obviously, it depends on the character. I don't think you can punish all the Ryu Fireballs with Perfect Parry Drive Rush, but I think the heavy one at least you can punish. I don't know about the other ones, but that stuff you can try when you learn how to, you know, use the Perfect Parry mechanic. I don't need to really teach you all that. You can kind of just see it. And then just go try it against all the other Fireball types and characters. But you see that when you perfect parry something, you can get a drive rush punish. Most characters can get this, and even if you can't, you can also cancel perfect parry to anything. So you see this? I could do perfect parry spiral arrow if my drive rush wasn't that good. I could do something like that, right? Because when you perfect parry, you pretty much can do whatever you want. It's like you're just going back to square one right you can cancel any move whatever it is you can just cancel right out of the perfect parry but if you regular parry you see you don't can't really do any of that stuff so that is why it's going to be important to try to perfect parry projectiles or just parrying them in general so you one don't lose drive gauge and two the perfect parry can open up some punish opportunities and help you get your offense started so another thing that is going to be very good is number rule number two is making sure you punish people's fake block strings or fake drive rush block strings just to say you see how i just did that all right but this is not a real string right so 
if your opponent wasted a whole drive gate and you have more drive meter than them and they just does low forward drive rush even if you have a super or an invincible DP, you can always make sure if you have more drive gauge than a person and they do low four drive rush, they're wasting three bars. It only takes two EX or two drive gauge meters to do an EX move, right? So if this is making my block string real right here. Obviously you can see I can bait it there, right? With the jab, I can just block, but if I do any other button, you see that I did stand medium punch, DP me. I do stand fierce, DP me, right? I do grab, DP. So this applies for pretty much medium punches, medium normals. Anytime someone cancel a medium normal drop rush and you have either a super or a DP, you can go ahead and let that thing rip and you don't let them create any free offense, right? So there's no free offense if they're doing stuff like that, right? They have to make it real with the jab first and then they get their mix up. But some people like to try to sneak stuff in and get like a fast grab and catch you off guard hoping that you're just like not thinking right here or something or they'll go into some a big button because they want to take more drive gauge from your character right so you can stop that from happening from using an invincible move anytime you see a drive rush and the best thing about this is let's say even if you do input the dp right when i do the drive rush you can always block in time you input dp you go right back to blocking the only character i would not recommend doing this on is kimberly because when she does stand medium kick drive rush her crouching medium kick is real for some reason and if you try to input dp it's just going to hit you before you can go back to block but other characters they cannot do crouch medium kick crouch medium kick and it's real right so that's only a kimberly thing so anytime you see someone doing a medium button into drive rush make sure you have that dp or super ready don't let them just get away with that all the time you know i think that is going to be very important tip number three is always be mindful of your drive gauge this drive gauge is everything bro think of this drive gauge like oxygen okay like you don't you need this to live obviously you can fight and burn out you can go and you can just know what a prodigy it out in the burnout but you don't want to fight in the burnout all the time because it could get scary of course because you can just boom your opponent have you in the corner and now you're stunned they get a free combo right or not even just that look at the chip you're taking chip damage now and then someone can do something like this and kill you with chip damage depending on where your health is right so stay away from being burnt out as much as possible honestly my biggest tip for people is once you see yourself not in that green anymore like your drive gauge is not in the green is like two or under if it's like a little bit under three but once it's like two i'd say just start backing off trying to play neutral there's a few things you can do to build drive gauge of course like making your opponent block a button like that you see block a medium or a heavy normal it builds a lot of drive gauge as you can see right there how much bar that just blocking the heavy kick does you can do a block string into a special move obviously with cami that's not a real block string but if you have a character like ryu you can do like stand fierce hadouken right and it's safe and you can just build drive gauge up with it or just walking around playing neutral walking forward builds drive gauge so if you walking forward walking back walk forward from far you can build some drive gauge so just make sure you always be mindful of your drive meter i don't care no matter what you can sometimes go into burnout and fight in the burnout if you feel like you're going to react or, you know, maybe it's a guess for game situation you're putting your opponent on. But do not just try to fight in the burnout all the time. It's not going to be good for you, okay? Be very mindful of your drive gauge. This drive gauge up here is like your oxygen, okay? Once you do that one drive gauge, like right where drive rush from a button right here, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about using drive gauge for a bit. You can do 
different things, different whiff punishes with buttons into special moves or combos, but try not to use the drive gauge again. You don't want to go into the burnout. Okay, next tip is going to be, I guess, a pretty basic one, but in my opinion, the most important or one of the most important tips in Street Fighter or just learning fighting games in general, making sure your anti heroes are good you don't want people jumping at you and creating free situations for offense right so you want to make sure your anti-airs are good whether it's a dp or a button like that or a dp like this whatever choice you make you want to make sure that you are anti-airing and you don't want to let your opponent get any free mix-ups or damage from just jumping on you because you didn't react in time you don't want that to happen and also you can end up losing a lot of drive gauge from blocking jump in so you don't want to just be blocking jump ins it's going to be very important to always be ready or try to be ready at least most times to anti-air your opponent you really want to make that muscle memory in my opinion so really try to learn your anti-airs with your character and make sure you're doing them at a good rate because no matter what level you are and i mean no matter what level you're playing at a professional level the lowest level of rookie whatever it is you gonna find people who jump at you everyone jumps no matter who they are everyone jumps at some point that's why you just have to be ready to anti-air them so really work on them anti-airs y'all with your character find out your anti-airs and make sure you're working on your anti-airs please okay the next tip we're going to be going over is going to be how to punish and counter drop impact i feel like this is a very important thing for you to know in this game and it's going to help you go a long way to not just get scrubbed out by drive impact stuns or just in general getting drive impacted so let's get into this one so of course the most obvious way to counter drive impact that you probably already know right is to drop impact back or even if you don't drop impact is to try to get a perfect parry even if you don't get a perfect parry you are plus in its situation you don't get a punish but you're plus three in this situation but of course you can get the perfect parry and if you get a perfect parry you can get drop impact here and look how much drop meter i took off of him from doing all those drop impacts for a perfect parry and uh course you don't need to do that you could do a combo there to push towards the corner but me personally if i have a lot of health and they have a lot of health i just do the two drive impacts and i take a lot of drive gauge from them but of course those are the two obvious ways to punish it and then the last way would be of course to super it right that is another way that you can punish drive impact is to super them most supers in the game are invincible to this this super sucks so it doesn't work all the time the level two you see but yeah most supers will always win because it's invincible and that's just how you beat drop impact right so then of course you have when you're burnt out in the corner drop impacts right you have some guaranteed drive impacts in this game that you just can't get out of so just imagine me having zero bars right here and i'm doing this this right here you cannot get out of there's nothing you can possibly do in this game to stop me from doing this if you have zero meter i can always stun you right so if you have zero bars this is guaranteed right there saying heavy punch drive impact guaranteed but there is a lot of things in this game that is not guaranteed that people try to do to just mess with your mental stack because drive impact is scary but of course some people like to do things like this right to get the stun but you can grab that right and this is why i'm explaining this because this is very important sometimes you don't have a meter but your opponent tries to go for a tricky way to stun you right so not all mediums you can grab but if you go into training room and test them out yourself you can figure all that stuff out but i could tell you for sure that if a person ever do crouching lights into drive impact you can always throw crouching light drive impact every single time it's never going to be real 
no matter what. You can even neutral jump it if they did that. It's a bit harder because if you delay it too much, this could happen and you still get hit. But if you did it instantly, you can just jump out of that, right? So that is going to be the next big way to stop drive impacts is just to make sure to be aware of grabbing them in the corner when you're burnt out. Like right here, you can also just grab a raw drive impact. You see it? I'm just... Come here. You see? You can always get that grab from the drive impact as long as it's not guaranteed. Of course, there's things like this. That is also guaranteed if your opponent do drive rush medium button into drive impact, you cannot grab that. You either have to super it or you have to take it. That's pretty much it. Like you either super it or take the drive rush crouch or medium punch into drive impact. So if you don't have a bar, you're out of luck. So that is another guaranteed way that someone can just stun you. But that is going to be the next big step, I think, into leveling up is making sure you grab those drive impacts when they're not true block strings. Don't let people get away with stuff like that because, you know, you can just get out the corner for free and reverse the momentum in the match. So make sure you're grabbing those drive impacts when you have the chance to. It's going to be very important. Next tip we're going to be having is going to be throw loops and shimmying so if you don't know what throw loops is pretty much you can put your opponent in the corner you can throw loop them like this and see and just but the good thing about this i would say go and do that you want to practice of course is coming to training room putting your character to do wake up reversal and make it their fastest button that way He's waking up with the fastest button and you can learn how to time your throw loop correctly so you're not getting hit with wake up buttons. This is going to be very important for the throw loop. Of course, your opponent can still tech the throw or back dash or jump out the corner. But if they wake up with a button, it will always beat the button. So you want to go and practice that because it's going to be very important. You'll have a chance to throw loop pretty much in any match that you play in. And it's just going to open up this thing that we like to call shimmy and i see a lot of comments of people always asking about what's a shimmy and how to shimmy and the reason i group these together is because they kind of go hand in hand right throw loops they open up the shimmy and a shimmy is pretty much when your opponent is scared of getting thrown right they tech the grab so i don't know can i do forward normal oh here we go so watch see how it's tech grab so a shimmy is pretty much going to be me walking in the range to look like i'm going to throw and then walking back out of the range and then that opens up the shimmy right and then you can get big shimmy combos since it's a punish counter you get big shimmy combos so you want to practice your shimmy combo make sure you have the optimal punish counter shimmy combo because this is going to be a big part of your gameplay and how you win matches and open your opponent is going to be off of the throw or off of the shimmy here so that is going to be a lot of your know, ways you open the opponent up. And it's not even just that is not the only way to shimmy. Of course, if, you know, you get a button from a drive rush that's plus on block, you can also, right, say you can do a shimmy from here. Right? So you can do stuff like that to get catch the shimmy. Cammy kind of has to back dash and then walk up a little bit, but... This is because he's second. Let me change it to count. No, no, not the count. I need to delay is what I wanted. Because people don't really tech that fast most of the time. Let's delay it by four frames. But there you go. See, so you can also shimmy your opponent from just any type of plus button situation. If you get a plus button in your opponent's face, no matter what it is, you can kind of just go for a shimmy at that point and either throw instant throw like that or it might get tacked of course so you just would throw or you just go for the shimmy here okay it's a very simple concept but it is the most 
it's the most used way to open up your opponent is the best way to put it so that is going to be what you're using mostly anytime you have some pressure or knockdown or any type of offensive sequence you creating for yourself is going to end up with a shimmy or a throw so that is going to be one of the most important if not most important tips in the whole video making sure you learn how to do the shimmy and the throw loops okay next tip is going to be making sure you have your punish counter combos not just your regular combo confirms you know you can learn your regular combo confirms pretty easily you know you can find them online i'm sure everywhere but not everyone tells you about your punish counter combo so anytime you punish something so let's just make ryu or is ryu a good does he have anything oh yeah he does i can do donkey kick right let's say i do donkey kick right with ryu so as you see this combo here it never combos right oh. You see, this never combos, even on regular counter hit. But what the punish counter do here is regular counter hit, you know, if a button is, let's see, this button is plus five one hit, right? So what a counter hit does is give you plus two frame advantage if you get a counter hit. And then what a punish counter does is give you plus four frame advantage. So you get an extra plus two frame advantage so that plus five button now becomes plus nine right so you get to do all type of cool combos so let's say you know i did donkey kick with ryu and i didn't space it correctly or or your opponent didn't space it correctly and now you see i can get this punish counter combo that i usually wouldn't be able to get so you want to learn your punish counter combos for punishes is going to be very important in helping you get the maximum amount of damage out of any situation when you punish something, you know. So even if Ryu did like an EXDP on Wake Up, right? Let's say, let's just say he woke up with this on Wake Up. You get a punish counter. And with that, with Kami, I like to do this combo. This is an optimal punish counter combo. I do Drive, Rest, Stand, Fierce. And I get Crouch Fierce, right? So as you can see, even with the drive rush plus frames, I could never do this combo here. Stand fears into crouch fears, it'll never combo. Not even on counter hit, right? But on punish counter, when I do drive rush stand fears, I can get crouch fears and then follow up with this big combo with Kami. Most characters have big punish counter combos, especially starting with Drive Rush if you're going to punish a DP. You just have to really find them with your character. I can't go through all of them with y'all, but I can explain the basics of how this works, you know. So when you punish something, you're going to get that plus four frame advantage from your button. So if that thing plus five is plus nine, if it's plus four is going to be plus eight you know so you understand it so you get bigger combos when you punish counter something and you get an even bigger combos when you do a drive rush punish counter because that plus nine is now going to become plus 13 you see that so an extra four frames of advantage is added onto a punish counter drive rush so you can get a lot of big combos when you do punish counter starting with drive rush because it's going to make whatever move you do plus eight now it's not going to be plus four anymore it's going to be plus eight so that drive rush crouching jab that cami has that was plus nine on punish counter drive rush punish counter is going to be plus 13 so i can do things like this now crouch jab crouch fierce you know which doesn't work on regular punish counter as you can see but i can do a combo like that that i would never usually be able to get because i did the drive rush punish counter so anytime you see yourself getting a drive rush punish counter make sure you are optimizing that damage it's going to be very important to get in the closeout rounds faster and just being able to do the most damage you can possibly so make sure you get your punish counter combos and just your punish combos in general learn that frame data is going to be very important to get these punish counter combos 
which is going to be learning the frame data of the move so make sure you learn the frame data learn what's minus and what's negative and you know all of that stuff kind of it's going to be helping your punish counter combos out and learning how to when things are punishable and when things are not punishable so make sure you learning that stuff and make sure you're practicing them drive rush or not drive rush but them punish counter combos in general make sure you're practicing those with your character okay and the last tip i'm going to have for you today is making sure you punish drive rush cancel buttons with drive reversal on block not all the time you know i already showed you to make sure you can punish the fake block strings with the dp but what happens when your opponent is not doing the fake block string right and they're keeping it real with the crouching jab a good way to get them off of you is going to be as soon as you see the green you want to drive reversal right as you can see here you can react within you have within 14 frames so as you can see i put it all the way up to 14 frame delay and that's the one that they can block so when you see someone do low forward drive rush and you have more drive meter than them right or let's say you just want to get out the corner and you know you're not going to put yourself in a burnout and still have a pretty decent amount of drive gauge you can always react to the green and punish the crouching medium kick into and into uh drive rush if you react extremely fast and you don't want to take a risk on reacting to the green you can literally as soon as you block the crouch and medium kick as you can see you just react instantly and you can get them off of you if you don't even want to try to react to the green because you can sometimes react to the green and of course like if you react 14 frames late you you will get blocked and it is a very common thing that happens in matches people react a bit late to the green and it just cost them you get a big punish a lot of characters get big punishes i mean candy and she gets a stand fair so look at that 2500 damage no meter right there so you don't want to be getting your drive reversal blocked but if you react to the green you will be good this goes for all buttons you can react especially off of heavy normals i think is very good because if you do heavy normal into it i think you can even pretty easy to react so you don't have as much time with the with this one with the heavy normal into it but it's still very reactable very reactable and I say it's very good with heavy buttons when you see people cancel from heavy buttons because they will take a lot of drive gauge from you on block since heavy buttons, you can't DP it as good as the other buttons, right? So a heavy button into drive rush is gonna be able to drain your drive gauge a lot more than other buttons. So you wanna make sure you're being conscious of that and drive reversaling when it's needed. So yeah that is going to be some tips that i really think is going to be helpful to you leveling up your game honestly i didn't want to make this video until we we're later on into the game and now that we're about to finally make it into season two very soon i felt like now we know a lot about the game i can make a video like this i don't want to come in this very blindly at the start of street fighter 6 life and then give you things that might change down the road obviously some stuff might change with the game in the next season but i think these general things should be staying with the game or of course like some of them like anti air and stuff going to be in the game forever but yeah let me know in the comment section down below if this video has helped you improve your rank at all or if you found a lot or any of these tips helpful let me know down below in the comment section and let me know what you think of these videos and if i should make a video on how to play neutral or stuff like that you know i know i do get a lot of comments about that but i want to know if y'all actually want a video like that over here on youtube but yeah let me know what y'all thought of today's video down in the comment section below and make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>